Hello, bonjour, thank you for joining us in person and virtually. Merci de nous joindre en personne et virtuellement. My name is Kevser Kamil and I will be your MC for today. Uh, mon nom est Kevser Kamil et je serai votre MC pour aujourd'hui. I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather today is the unceded territory of the Algonquin and Shinabek people. J'aimerais commencer par reconnaître que la terre sur laquelle nous sommes réunis aujourd'hui est le territoire non cédé du peuple algonquin Anishinaabeg. I'd like to introduce our first speaker for this press conference, the Member of Parliament for Pierre Fondaler, Montreal. Uh, he's the sponsor of the motion M62 on Uyghur refugee resettlement, and uh, he's also the chair of the Subcommittee on International Human Rights and the member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. J'aimerais d'abord vous présenter notre premier conférencier, uh, le député de Pierre Fondelard à Montréal. Uh, Monsieur uh, Zuberi et uh, Monsieur Samer Zuberi est le président du sous-comité des droits humains uh, et membre du comité des affaires étrangères. Il est également le parent de la motion M62 sur la réinstallation des Uyghurs. Bonjour, merci tout le monde d'être ici. I have, a, I have a, my voice is gone, but uh, I can assure you I don't have COVID. I've taken a negative uh, COVID test just for everybody's uh, comfort. Je suis très heureux que nous sommes ici aujourd'hui. Ça, c'est une importante journée pour uh, les droits humains uh, dans notre monde. Today, we will be having our first hour debate around a motion which I've introduced in the House, motion M62, which calls for the resettlement of 10,000 Uyghurs and other Turkic minorities here in Canada. The motion is being seconded by one of my colleagues, Rachel Bendayan, Member of Parliament from Utremo. This motion calls for 10,000 Uyghurs to be resettled here, vulnerable Uyghurs who are in third countries. It calls for this program to start as of 2024 and to continue over two years. This builds upon a motion that was passed unanimously in our House of Commons here in Canada. We were the first legislature to do so, but not the last. We, in 2021, in February 2021, recognize that genocide is occurring in Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. This is an abomination. It should not be happening on the face of this earth. After World War II, we said never again. We were sluggish in responding to Rwanda. We were tardy in responding to Yugoslavia. Now we have a moment where we can respond. This genocide is occurring now. It's time for all of us to act within the international community. America has already introduced a Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, which puts forth a reverse onus on forced labor products from Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. We in Canada are introducing something new, which speaks to the Canadian tradition around resettlement of refugees. We are a welcoming country. The Wilson Center report documented that at least 1,574 Uyghurs in third countries between 97 and 2002 were detained and or refueled back to China, where they do face concentration camps today. Most of these, most of these people were refueled and, de and detained between 2016 and 2022. They came primarily from the North African countries and from the Middle East, however, not exclusively. We have a Canadian, Hussein Jalil, who was also ren uh, uh, rendered in a similar fashion from Uzbekistan while on a family visit. He, was, he is now serving a very long sentence. He is a Canadian citizen. The U.S. administration has recognized both Trump and Biden have recognized that genocide is occurring. Many other parliaments in the world have also recognized that genocide is occurring towards the Uyghur people and other Turk minorities. Recently, Michelle Bachelet, the outgoing UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, said that the allegations that the Uyghur people are putting forth are credible and they may mount to international crimes, including crimes against humanity. That engages countries around the world globally to enact the responsibility to protect doctrine. We as a country, Canada and others, have responsibility to protect vulnerable populations 
suffering, crimes against humanity, and or genocide. This motion responds in part to that. It doesn't respond wholly, but it responds in part to that obligation that we have as a country to protect people who are suffering crimes against humanity and genocide. This motion also has support across party lines. Individuals from all parties have already expressed their support for this. From the Conservative Party, to the Bloc Québécois, to the NDP, to the leader of the Green Party, all have already expressed support for this motion. I'll leave the floor to my colleagues and then happy to take questions and answers. Merci beaucoup d'être ici, tout le monde. Thank you, MP Zuberi. Merci, uh, Député Zuberi. Next, we have uh, Mr. Mehmet Torti, who is a prominent Uyghur activist. Uh, he's the co-founder of the World Uyghur Congress and the founder and executive director of the Ottawa-based Uyghur Rights Advocacy Project. He works closely with transnational and cross-party parliamentarians and the civil society to advance and promote the rights of the Uyghurs in the Xinjiang Autonomous Region. Nous avons maintenant M. Mehmet Torti, qui est un activiste Uyghur canadien. Il est un des cofondateurs de, du Congrès mondial des Uyghurs et euh, le fondateur et directeur général du projet de défense des droits des Uyghurs à Ottawa. Il travaille en collaboration avec les parlementaires transnationaux et multipartites et la société civile afin de promouvoir les droits des Uyghurs au Xinjiang et dans le monde. Thank you. As a Uyghur Canadian, I'm appealing to you for help in Can from Canadians today on behalf of Uyghur Canadians, on behalf of multi-faith communities, including Jewish group, Muslim group, Christian group, and all other groups who have vigorously supported us and a campaign for us. My people, Uyghurs, have, uh, continue to face genocide and a crime against humanity at the hands of China. We have known of this global challenge for some time. But today, we shine a light on another challenge, Chinese crime against humanity the Uyghur people, uh, for the Uyghur people living outside of China. Since the start of Uyghur genocide by Xi Jinping in 2014, many Uyghurs have fled China, leaving everything behind with their hopes of saving and rebuilding their lives. But this was never possible. Chinese transnational repression campaign has hung over them like a shadow, following Uyghurs across the world wherever they are settled. Chinese global hunt of Uyghur refugees outside China is exhaustive and severe, especially in countries like Turkey, Pakistan, Egypt, and other Central Asian nations, where Chinese almighty dollars can buy anything, including human values and the dignity. With the help and the collaboration of authority and regimes, for more than 1,500 Uyghurs have been forcefully repatriated back to China, and their whereabouts remain unknown today. I gave this remarks. The, as, as, as I give these remarks, Uyghur refugees are suffering in prison and detention centers in Thailand, Morocco, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and other countries. Chinese global hunt of Uyghurs is unique to this genocide. And it is unique that Uyghurs are up against China, one of the world's most powerful nations run by the most brutal dictator. Chinese regime will not stop until they eradicate the Uyghur people. Even in democratic nations like Canada, around 2,000 Uyghur Canadians have lost all means of communication with their loved ones and relatives since 2017. And many of them still don't know if their family members or friends are alive or dead due to Chinese blockage of communication. Uyghurs here face transnational repression too in the forms of harassment, cyber attacks, social media trolling, and the threats. Threats to inform on their community, threats to return home to China, and threats on their family back home. These threats have a deep, painful impact on our community. But at least in Canada, their physical safety is assured, their families' futures are assured, they can walk down the street safely, safely, practice their religion safely, and speak the Uyghur language safely, which was banned by China. Canada has a fine tradition and a history of welcoming refugees, saving lives of vulnerable communities, fleeing war and atrocity crimes, including genocide. We hope this tradition will continue today. Therefore, motion M62 tabled by Honorable Samir Zberi 
needs our support, the support of Canadians and of government representatives across the political spectrum. The Uyghur people need the support right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mehmet Torti. Merci, Monsieur Mehmet Torti. Uh, now I would like to introduce Mrs. Margaret McGray Johnson to say a few words. She was a government official for 37 years, many at the assistant deputy minister level. She has been engaged in China issues since 1979. She is now senior fellow with the Graduate School of Public and International Affairs at the University of Ottawa, and she is the policy advisor of the Uyghur Rights Advocacy Project. J'aimerais maintenant présenter Madame Margaret McGray Johnson pour dire quelques mots. Elle est Elle était fonctionnaire pendant 37 ans, dont plusieurs au niveau du sous-ministre adjoint. Elle s'occupe des questions relatives à la Chine depuis 1979. Elle est maintenant agré agrégée supérieure de recherche à l'École supérieure des affaires publiques et internationales de l'Université d'Ottawa et conseillère du projet des défenses des droits des Uyghurs. Thanks very much. Good afternoon. I was a friend of China for 40 years, but that regime cannot incarcerate millions of innocent Uyghurs for simply existing and expect to keep their friends in other countries. For many years, Canadians have been welcoming refugees with open arms, including those from Vietnam, Tibet, Syria, and most recently from Ukraine. The Uyghurs need us now. Millions have been incarcerated in indoctrination camps for years to learn Mandarin and Xi Jinping thought and to forget their religion. In the camps, 40 or 50 are crowded into a cell where there is only room for a few to lie down to sleep at a time. Mass sterilization and rape have been uh, perpetrated against many of the women and men have been similarly tortured and many have died. Many of those in the camps for years have then gone on to prison sentences with long uh, terms on them. And one in 25 of the population in one region, making it the highest prison rate in the world. Hundreds of thousands are being used as forced labor in the Uyghur region of China or sent off in groups of thousands across China to serve as forced labor in factories, making products for sale in the West thereby implicating us all. The situation of the children is also dire. More than a million Uyghur children and 800,000 Tibetan children have been put in indoctrination camps, uh, schools from kindergarten to the end of high school. This is ha happening not just to the children uh, whose parents are in the camps, but also to those who have parents still at home. They're, they must speak only Mandarin, not their own language, they're learning Xi Jinping thought. Evidence shows they are not being dressed warmly enough for cold conditions and are not being properly fed. There are no summer vacations home. We've heard this story before in Canada, and it does not end well. Every day, each of those children must wake up hoping that this will be the day that their parents come to rescue them. They never do. The United Nations has documented many of these atrocities, but in a recent vote, they decided not to act further on the evidence. It will be up to individual countries to address the problem from here. Countries such as Canada. Those Uyghurs who have somehow managed to escape to countries like Kazakhstan, Turkey and Egypt are often at risk of being returned to China where they are sent straight from the airport to an indoctrination camp. This is not a situation to which anyone should ever be forced to return. We want to welcome them to Canada, where like many refugees before them, they will be valued, contributing members of Canadian society. Thank you. Thank you again to all of our speakers. We will now go to the questions. Merci encore une fois à nos conférenciers. Nous allons maintenant passer aux questions. Il n'y a pas de questions dans la salle. There's no question in the room and there are no questions online. There's no question online. Uh, thank you so much. This concludes our press conference. Thank you for uh, those supporting uh, in person here and uh, those tuning in online as well. Ceci conclut uh, la conférence de presse. Merci de nous joindre uh, 
en personne et virtuellement.